We have an orchid in a broken pot, growing roots. We have sunshine. I am in the mood, and I've got time today. Do you? And we have a noisy east side. But when the cars or the scooters aren't driving by, then we have a lot of chirping birds in the background, which is so awesome, and I don't want to have to edit that out. So I hope that I timed it somewhat right in order for this video to be a little bit relaxing, enjoying the spring song of the birds. Ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> I'm not getting very far. I'm trying to get my tag out. So let me just see if that will work. Hmm. Yes, I also have my hammer, por si acaso, just in case. Um. <laughs> yeah, not exactly on my rotor either for repotting. I forgot this one completely. And then the other day I went to put it out on the east shelf for some sunshine. And the pot cracked on me. So... Well, never mind. We did our supplies shopping and we're going to hopefully get another pot for the one that we're going to be using today for this orchid. This is my Lelia amethyst. First time bloomer last year in 2022. Whoa. Oh, well, root casualty. Ah, what a shame. Okay, never mind. Ah. I knew it when I flushed it and I put it on the chairs that have, when without the cushions, they have a grating, so I protect the roots that way. But now I just completely forgot. Too excited, too excited to get into the pot. I hope you have some time today as well that you can join me. I'm going to put some timestamps into the description for your convenience, should you not want to watch the entire video, because I have a feeling... This one's not going to be edited down <laughs> to make the video shorter. I just, I'm just in that mood, you know. It feels warm. I'm in short sleeves. There's a light, light breeze going. I don't need the umbrella because, you know, the leaves haven't got that much of a space that the sun can burn them. Oh, it's just one of those days I woke up and I thought, Breathe! I can breathe! I don't have to clench my teeth! So, Lelia Amethyst is coming in clutch to let me do something on the patio. All right, all my kit and caboodle here. Oh, nice. I already like what I'm seeing. Ah, what I'm seeing, you can't see. The whole point is that you too can see. Look at that. Look at that. Let's see what we can salvage here around the edges. Probably not much. Positive thinking though. Keep thinking positively. And yes, I film my repots because I know that some of you thoroughly enjoy these videos. Even that a lot of it is just repeat, same procedure, etc. But sometimes I get some new people in here, haven't seen me repot yet, haven't seen the past videos. So yes, I am filming my repots over and over and over again. Also because I love talking to you. I may not get too carried away. The base is <laughs> very, you know, the rhizome isn't exactly a strong rhizome for this orchid, so I don't want to be ripping too hard. Let's try and give her a little bit of a jiggle and a squeeze, and it's probably the root down here that is giving me issues because it is also attached to the microfiber. So let's see if I should keep pulling or if I should just cut it. I would like to kind of... Give it a go and see if I can save it. Eh. Sometimes vigorous orchids with their roots will be forgiving if there's a kink in it. Normally for my semi-hydro self-watering pots, I don't like to have kinked roots in the pot unless they are there to serve as a purpose of anchoring. And uh, 
then I just take it in stride that I might lose an active root that was kinked. But we got her. We have got her and she isn't looking too shabby. Not looking too shabby. I gotta watch that growth. That grew over the winter. This one right here. And I'm getting another new growth right there. And it is that growth that grew. Ah, first kink that I can cut off. It is that growth that grew the nice roots. So we'll be mindful, but we have backup coming. Let me see how clean I can keep my tray. <laughs> yeah, okay, so what I can tell here, you can see the outline maybe of the pot right here, the previous pot. So I didn't up pot the last time. So it's time for a root cleanup, isn't that awesome? I get to play around a little bit more because this is importante. I can do an up pot once, but the next time, yeah, you can't just keep up potting, up potting, filling around with lecker. That is a myth when it comes to growing in inorganic media, self-watering, semi-hydroponics, whichever way you want to set up your semi-hydroponics. It is a myth. You can get away with it once, depending how quickly roots grow, maybe twice, just increase the pot size, but it is not something you can do indefinitely. At the end of the day, aeration, gas exchanges, all that needs to be re-established. And with that, a good root cleanup is necessary. Now I have my catch tray. I always try to keep my leka in the catch tray as clean as possible because it is a bit of a nightmare <laughs> cleaning leka. The fun part about recycling is when you pour freshly sterilized, sorted out, clean lecker back into your container. And that to me, oh, that is so satisfying. I try to be mindful with what I leave in my catch tray though. <laughs> it doesn't always work that way. Eventually, the process just is more important than me faffing around about how to very carefully keep my catch tray as clean as possible and check this out that's why we couldn't get the tag out the root has grown through the tag look at that all right so and it's grown all the way around <laughs> into the pot up and around so the root is more important methinks i have to make another tag <sighs> okay never mind that's a quick fix. Now watch me cut through the root. Ruin my tag and the root. <laughs> oh, I better not throw that away. It's got the dates. At least it has the date of when I received the orchid on it. And that gives me a calculation of when to repot her again. Because I try every two years, maximum three years. So I got her in 2018. I assume, based on roots, at least 2020, if not 2021, I potted her up. Here we are in 2023, and we are right on schedule with what I believe to be the best when it comes to repotting anything in semi-hydroponics. So, maybe I should just take a seat, get you in close. And let's enjoy some root cleanup. <laughs> Seeing as we're so exposed, I'm just going to keep pouring water over the roots and see how many I can salvage from the microfiber. What I like to see is how vigorous is the root system? What can I get away with? First of all, I always try to maintain all the roots I have. And at the end, it may get a little bit more radical because then I know how much I've got left and what I can work with and what I can sacrifice. I'm just hoping I'm in frame. <laughs> I think I'm in frame. I've pretty much boxed myself into this <laughs> location and I've got King at my feet, uh, even at the tripod's feet. So I'm gonna try and stay as still as possible because if he moves, that tripod jiggles. He thinks now that I've sat down, everything is cool. Well, yeah, it is kinda. <laughs> 
So if there's a jiggle I'm not aware of, apologies in advance. Oh my goodness, you guys. What a beautiful day. Might as well get some color on my hands, huh? Okay, it's getting too warm for King. <laughs> right. I wonder if I can... I don't need to get the support out. That is not my first priority at this point. But let's see that we work on the kinks. And put the little bucket here. Well, it's not a bucket. It's actually my mask for all the dead roots. And see what we can muster without breaking that new growth. We need that new growth now that she has active roots in the root system that I'm cleaning. It's all a little bit precarious. I'm not saying this is a straightforward repot. It's a fun one. But none of it is really straightforward because the new roots, even though actively growing from the previous growth, they could fail. Not all of them are necessarily guaranteed to make it. So I cannot be breaking off the new growth. All right. That is one of the older roots. That's okay. This is okay. All right, I'm gonna have to remember this camera angle. I'm actually able to see what I'm doing on screen and see if it's in focus. The sun is not glaring on it. Now all this, what I see in here is what I'd like to get out. And I guess for that, I'm gonna have to stand up. <laughs> During the winter, I've been very mindful about picking away at the moss here at the base, seeing as the structures down here are so, so fine, thin, not much substance going on at the rhizome. New growths are very thin at the base. I've been very, very mindful about the moss. But some roots have grown in and through the moss, so I have to also respect that. I've lost new growths because of the wetness around the base. And it would appear that possibly this growth is gone as well. Let me see if I can show you right there. I hope you can see that. You see the brown and then the green? It feels firm, so I'm gonna leave it. But in this case, because the structures are so fine, it means nothing. Firmness means nothing. So I'm just going to probably lose that growth, but that's okay. I've, I've lost growths on this orchid before. It doesn't seem to set her back. Well, this one's really, really kinked and actually bruised now, so... The Valaman was totally compromised. A little bit of Maji, not Baridi, not Moto either. Moto meaning hot, Baridi meaning cold, Maji meaning water in Swahili. There we go. Now, this is the same size pot, it's 18 centimeters. Even though I feel the repot would be so much easier if I took a bigger pot. <laughs> not for this orchid. It looks a little silly. She just needed a root cleanup. So it's going to be a little bit of a mm, pedantic, meticulous filling up with lecker. And her previous lecker mix was small mixed with large. However, the large was from when I first potted her up and I then filled up the pot with small lecker and she clearly loved it. So we are going to accommodate her in small lecker again. And I do have two directions of growth, three as a matter of fact. Yeah. She's going in the middle as best as I can. 
trying to respect the shape of the roots as they were before at the edge of the pot and then seeing about the height in the pot and it turns out I have removed all of the cushion of moss so I need to be really mindful about this root if I don't want to lose it but if I push this down further I'm cracking the roots over there so yeah <laughs> although we did a great job we're not out of the repot woods just yet at least her support is not going to give me an issue. That's already nicely <laughs> embedded in her network of roots. So I'm going to just start with a small batch of Lekka to see how far we get. A little bit all around. And then I'm going to really be holding the orchid down when I shake her because she's not going any lower in the pot. The roots at the bottom are already touching. So where's my best point? where I can hold her without breaking anything, roots, new growth, etc. And I know I'm probably cracking roots as I do this, but uh, we've got plenty. That's wishful thinking, but we've got plenty from what I could tell. Just a little bit all around. I don't want to create a like a gridlock. I want the water to be able to really get Lekka into as many nooks and crannies as possible. To think that I'm going to achieve air pocket free climate in the pot, that is not, that's not realistic. But to the best of my ability, I want to re-establish as much of the moisture each root had around it initially and recreate that as best as possible. Oh, I'm holding on as tightly as I dare. Sorry for the shadow of my hand. Sorry. It's got a bit of a lean, but that's okay. Don't mind the lean too much. Hey, <laughs> we did it. We did it. Ah, let me drain her and let me show you the mound in the back to protect the roots that were initially covered in moss. Ah, I'm so happy. And yes, she's going to get a new tag. <laughs> this will do for now though. Oh boy, because I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> a lot. Once I finished filming this video, oh my goodness. <laughs> Mingi Kazi. That is Swahili for a lot of work. Still got some air holes in the back here. We'll fix that. I may need to get one more little helping of small lecker just to round it off right here. I'll fix that, but that is not something you need to <laughs> hang around for. I would say at least if you've made it this far, thank you so, so much. Let's give her a good flush. We've still got debris coming out. Hakuna Matara. That's fine. And just a little bit more small lecker to top off this area and we will be golden well um <laughs> something like this <laughs> okay that's done and now the only thing necessary required left to do is put some fertilizer into her reservoir because she is in active growth in more ways than one so we want to support that for the time being, that is 200 parts per million, even though I will increase her fertilizer levels probably in a week's time. Gosh, I hope that you managed to stay to the end, that you enjoyed this repot. <laughs> Please, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I know this was a bit laissez-faire, but it was such a beautiful afternoon on the patio. Thank you so, so much for watching. Your support is appreciated. Have yourself a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please that you stay safe. Take care, bye. bye.